Good afternoon to all, and thank you very much, Tanshi Michael and Mr. Wolfgang. Thank you as well to the organizer of the event. I'm sorry I'm eating sweets to keep myself awake, because I just arrived back from Davos on Sunday, and I realized after that long trip, you, can, you cannot sleep. I just could not sleep because it has been like uh, a three o'clock in the morning wake up call every other day of my five days there. And then, of course, when I got back, I been waking. I, I, I managed to sleep for like four hours and then I woke up uh, each time at three o'clock. So I'm not too sure whether it's the time or me that is the problem. But <laughs> yesterday I had uh, three events similar to this, a couple of meetings with people. And today, this is my third event of the day. You know, this, yeah, this is my third event of the day, and then I'll have uh, two more later. So I apologize if my speech is a bit slurry as well as I'm a little bit lost in things. But I hope I do not lose uh, in translation the message that I'm supposed to deliver. Now, um, thank you very much again for, deliver, for, for today and the opportunity to just give a bit of address on the Economic and Strategic Outlook Forum that... Uh, you have kindly invited me to attend. Um, there are many questions, I believe, that you will be asking, but I'd like to set the tone that one of the focus today in Malaysia is to ensure, just as I was asked outside just now, what is the status of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership that ASEAN is working on? And the details are, of course, uh, known only to the negotiators, but I believe that we are trying our best to conclude something that has not been concluded for years. And what will entail out of the RCEP will be a huge multilateral, multinational agreement between Asia, ASEAN and, and the rest of the dialogue partners, which will be about 16 countries altogether. Now, with that kind of economic bloc, Malaysia, as well as its partner, will be able to trade more seam seamlessly and more competitively with the world. Now, uh, the, RCEP, the RCEP provides for us the opportunity to have better access and market liberalization, and its benefit includes coordination and standardization of rules, as well as procedures, which are different from each ASEAN FTA and six dialogue partner. So we will ensure that it will work seamlessly and that we will be able to cut across all barriers that we face today amongst ASEAN. RCEP would also open up opportunities for local businesses to obtain raw materials of good quality at cheaper price between each other, and thereafter we will be able to use our rules of origin. Last year, ASEAN countries managed to sign the economic, uh, the, the, sorry, the agreement on e-commerce digital trade between ASEAN, and it is one of the first in the world, which actually has become a reference point even to the WTO. It was mentioned during the discussion recently with the WTO nation, where I was, uh, where I was able to, to participate, and we had stress. The ASEAN countries in that discussion did stress that uh, we had already proceeded in ASEAN our own digital commerce agreement. And WTO is looking into the same, and I hope that they will find similar, if not a better, uh, terms between uh, the WTO nations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd, I'd just like to inform that the growth of the Malaysian economy uh, is slightly to 4.4% in the third quarter uh, in 2018 and over the same period a year ago, and which is fractionally down from 4.5 year-on-year expansion in the second quarter and marks a two-year low. There are many announcements that we have made in METI as well as Smart Trade, and tomorrow will be quite significant because we'll be announcing the entire year trade. Um, I'm not privileged to announce it today because it's still embargoed, but rest assured, Malaysia is still on the right track. No matter what the naysayer says, no matter what you hear or read, the fundamentals of Malaysia is intact. More so, the people doing business are very intact as well as progressing, as well as confident, very confident in the product that they export outside of Malaysia. 
So overall, our trade is good, but we do need to accept one fact. The challenges today uh, is so volatile. The problem with us, unfortunately, is we tend to follow what is written. We tend to follow based on gut, based on emotion. It's good to have good gut, good you know, uh, feelings. Uh, it's good to have predictive uh, feelings as well on your end. But when it comes to following a herd mentality, then we're in trouble. I always tell people the reason why Malaysia has managed to weather the storm no matter what it is, is because of people. Not because of the government, but because of people who had faith in their businesses, in the product that they want to sell, in the market that they participate in. And that has kept Malaysia afloat. And, and thankfully, the government have been there as well to introduce good policies and acceptable policies. Now, with the current government, I know some are beginning to question what are the benefits that we have seen after the 9th of May 2018. I'm telling you this. There are a lot of people coming into Malaysia, not only because they had a change of government, but because they want to rebuild Malaysia together. And I've always asked them, if we can rebuild Malaysia together and with your help, do you think we'll forget what you've done by, by, by coming in and sacrificing together with us in rebuilding our nation? We won't. Because there is one thing that I've learned when I was young, also from my parents as well as friends, who always told me, one of the premise in our life is never to forget the source of water, never to forget who was with us at the, at the most trying of times. And Malaysia, our nation is facing a trying times. There are people giving negative uh, connotation of our country. They are giving negative outlook of our country. And one which I had addressed just now during my second forum like this was on the issue of palm oil. There are a lot of people attacking palm oil, more so in the European side, and they've always used the reason that we are not sustainable, that we are killing the orangutans. Now, when they touch on the orangutan, coincidentally, I come from Sabah, which has a lot of orangutan, and besides human beings who are also like orangutan. So, <laughs> but they are good people. Okay, um, good animals as well. The issue is about competition. When they want to compete with our oil palm and they lie about our oil palm, that gets to me. Why it gets to me is because it becomes unfair when they start lying about how our sustainability is. Just like when I met a counterpart of mine in Europe, the gentleman said, oil palm is controversial, blah, 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 and blah. So I said, put it this way. Your country has kept a lot of money from people who devastated our forests. Your country had accepted money that was stolen from devastation of forests. So for you to judge our country on finding a solution to a devastated forest that was done by criminals who have since kept their money in your country, I think that is unfair. Why is because... Why is because it is true. Once the forest has been destroyed by these bad people, what are we going to do? Are we just going to leave it to fate that something will grow out of it? No. The fact that I said earlier, the resilience of the Malaysian people is they come up with ideas to actually grow something commercial out of it so that the existing ecosystem of that devastated forest will have opportunity commercially we'll have opportunity for employment as well. So palm oil has become one of the crops that were grown out of the devastation and, and uh, damage done by bad people. So now we have another battle. The battle is countries judging us over a product, which you may not be in, but a product you're very much a part of because Malaysia's 40% of its production is on oil palm, palm oil. So we must defend a crop that is viable to our nation, that is also acceptable to nations other than European nations. So I keep on asking my friends in Europe, 
you ask me to finalize certain FTAs, but yet you question our palm oil. I think we need to move forward from there, except the fact that we have come up with solution that is sustainable for our nation, that is sustainable from the height where we're coming from. Maybe not from the height where the Europeans are coming from, because they have uh, industrialized themselves, they've gone to industry 4.0, they've gone to high-tech or high-end technologies, and yet they judge us on the, normal, on the crops that can grow in Malaysia. Now, anyway, I don't want to talk too much of it, but maybe we can discuss this during the question and answer. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would, on behalf of the government, I'd like to assure you that various measures will continue to strengthen the structural reforms that you expect us to do and to accelerate our country's convergence with developed economies. We will ensure that we work with all these developed economies and that is why the Prime Minister and many other ministers in the Cabinet have made many attempts to reach out to other countries to work together with us, but more so to Malaysians who are already in those countries, our diasporas there, to spread the message that Malaysia is good for business. Thank you very much and God bless all.